Uh, this slide here has a URL uh, which basically documented um, some issues about some numbers about the total uh, sizes of uh, computer centers. I pointed out how hard this is to find out uh, from the internet. Um, remember that Microsoft, Google, and Amazon are not going to tell you how many computers they have. And because that's proprietary information. So what you have to do is to sort of um, indirectly find out. And this particular article here indirectly found out some information about Google from, uh, pr from data they released on their power efficiency. So in 2010, there are meant to be uh, some 30 million servers worldwide, which Google had about 3%, 900,000. And Google's total power usage at that time was 200 megawatts. And um, so if you look at that, that's, uh, that's actually a 1% of the, less than 1% of the total power used in data cent centers, even though they have 3% of the servers. That just shows that clouds are more cost effective than the average data center. If you want to look at how much power this is, it's a large amount of power, 200 megawatts. But it's around 0.01% of the total power used on anything worldwide. So if you look around this time, clouds are 20% maybe of the total world server count. And uh, that's a growing fraction. And you will get these estimates from these companies, Gartner, IDC, and people, about the fraction of the world's computing that's done on clouds. So here is a comparison of uh, supercomputers with clouds. And actually, the larger supercomputers are competitive with some of the large clouds, namely Sequoia, which is a machine built by IBM, so called Blue Gene Q, which is at the Lawrence Livermore Lab. It is got its, uh, la its a very powerful machine with so called peak performance on LIMPAC, which is a measure of performance used in the scientific computing of um, 16 petaflops. Um, uh, so, and uh, it has 98,000 chips, each with 16 cores. And so that's 1.6 million processor cores. And it uses around 8 megawatts of power. So that's, uh, that number of uh, compute chips is comparable to some of the large, the, 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 some of those mega servers with 100,000 servers. At the time, this is one of the confusions. So if I go to the internet, Gannon says Microsoft has up to a million servers. I can't find any particular data telling me which servers have um, um, a million, which data centers have a million servers. I only can find ones with 100,000 servers. So anyway, if we look at uh, this comparison between supercomputing and clouds, the largest supercomputer has a performance which is 1 to 2% of the total cloud computing system. And Google has got a total computing power, which is factors of 10 or probably more greater than these supercomputers. These numbers are difficult again also to track because they're changing. What was true in 2010, when I wrote, when I where the data which I deduced this from came is probably not true today. All these, especially clouds, have exploded. We pointed out, I mean, look, remember from the eBay discussion, eBay was not doing these uh, optimized queries um, in 2010. It was just doing simple processing, and now it's added optimized queries. A lot of the developments in the cloud area have just happened over the last three years. And there's been therefore an explosion of use and an explosion in the size of clouds. And quite where we are today, I do not know. Maybe somebody can find a better reference on the internet. Um, so if you are, this, cl this class will look at clouds in more detail later on. Uh, here that uh, is just a summary of some of the features of clouds. Um, one of the important feature, which some people, uh, there's a famous report from Berkeley, which pointed out, which summarized clouds. And it stressed the fact that clouds were elastic as an important uh, feature. By elastic, it means that um, you can go to Amazon 
And if you want a uh, thousand computers, you buy a thousand computers uh, by the R. If you want one computer, you just buy one computer. So the interesting point about that is, this is computing on demand. That's why people think of the clouds as similar to, you know, electrical grids and things like that. Uh, clouds provide computing when you need it, and so. That's an interesting difference from a traditional computer center. When your university or, or department buys a computer, you buy a certain number of computers, and you have that number of computers. You don't get more computers when you need them. So, for clouds, obviously, uh, looking at demands are very dramatically. When um, when you have the Super Bowl. Uh, E-commerce sites that advertise on the Super Bowl are going to get a significant increase in usage at that time, and so on. Or when you have an Olympic site, that Olympic site wants a lot of computers while the Olympics are, on, are ongoing, but it doesn't want a lot of computers when the Olympics are finished. So elastic uh, service is pretty interesting, pretty important. Um, if you look at supercomputers, they're optimized for having wonderful network uh, communication between the nodes of the supercomputer because they want to do parallel computing that requires that. Clouds tend to be optimized in a different way. They're optimized to have good network access to the nodes of the cloud because so much of the cloud work is users accessing services, users, where those users could either be people or sensors. Remember, we have the 24 billion Internet of Things. Those sensors will want to access the cloud. So good network access to clouds is extremely important. Um, another in obvious feature is we're pooling resources, namely cloud centers. Clouds actually have, you could say, a couple of different implementations, so-called private clouds, where you have your own cloud. But the most uh, prominent clouds are possibly the public clouds like Amazon, Azure, and Google Compute Engine, where you pull resources, you make them available, you share them, and that's actually one way you can get particularly effective elastic response, because when one person is not using it, somebody else can. So that's a traditional shared computer facility. Um, you have pretty flexible resource allocation. You can get the machines you want of a particular type with a particular memory. And whatever you do, everything is measured. You pay by you pay by the storage use, by the CPU use, by the network use, and so on. Or if you, when you have so-called platform as a service, you might pay by the software use of that platform. And uh, we also have already pointed out uh, in the discussion of the actual data centers, that we have this economy of scale in performance and electrical power. Another interesting feature of clouds is that they've generated a whole new raft of software, which is sometimes called platform as a service. So clouds have these two features. Infrastructure as a service is you go and just buy a computer. Then you then that computer runs probably Linux or Windows, and then you take that computer and add your software. So that's so-called infrastructure as a service. The other important, another important concept is platform as a service, which is um, a value added to infrastructure as a service with a rich software environment. And that differs somewhat between the different clouds. Google has a somewhat different one from Azure, which is somewhat different from Amazon. And uh, they all actually tend to share some ideas, such as uh, MapReduce. And the storage ideas such as uh, NoSQL, which stands for not only SQL, which is technologies like Bigtable or HBase, which have been specially designed for big data. And uh, these, these new programming models were, uh, were effectively developed uh, somewhat academically, but mainly, ma mainly probably commercially, to solve these giant cloud applications such as information retrieval, e-commerce, and social uh, networking sites.